Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about something that's a little bit personal, something that I've talked about a little bit on the blog, but that I've been wanting to film a video for for a long time, and that is double jaw surgery. I woke up feeling like I was on the moon. I woke up feeling like I need a honey goat. For those of you who don't know me, I am Lauren Everett. I'm the creator of The Skinny Confidential, and I underwent jaw surgery, and it was gnarly. So I kind of wanted to make this video for anyone that's going through something similar or that's considering jaw surgery and just kind of break it down for you guys so you can understand all the dynamics because there's a lot. So when I was 12 years old, I was told I needed this surgery. My jaw was 12 millimeters. Is it milliliters? Millimeters. Millimeters. How do you say it? Millimeters. Millimeters. Oh, I can't pronounce anything. Mil milliliter. Milliliter is like liquids. So How do you mil say it? Millimeter. Millimeter. Yeah. <laughs> so my jaw was 12 milliliters off, which is a lot. So they told me I needed the surgery when I was 12, and I kind of brushed it under the rug and didn't want to think about it, but as I got older, I was grinding my teeth every single night. I had jaw pain and head pain, my teeth hurt, and it just became like a constant problem. I went to the dentist when I was like 18 and he told me that I had grinded down a lot of my teeth and that if I continued this way, that I was basically gonna grind my teeth down to nothing. So then I was like, oh shit, I need to get this surgery. Well, it was covered by insurance, but it's a lot of downtime, so I had to kind of strategically place when I was going to get jaw surgery into my calendar. So I waited a couple more years, and then I went to the dentist, and I had to do the whole Invisalign thing. So Invisalign is basically like invisible braces, and before jaw surgery, you usually have to do it. And I just wore it at night. I wore it for like a year and a half, and then it was time for the surgery. So the doctor told me that I would probably be swollen for two months. So that's what I planned on taking off was two months. And shout out to my doctor, Dr. McGann. He was incredible. Um, so I think it was like three years ago. I went into surgery, kind of fearless about it. I had done a lot of research on it, but I don't really think I knew what I was in for. It was a nine hour surgery and basically they broke my jaw in tons of different places. And my, as Michael likes to say, they actually took my jaw out and put it back together. So it was crazy. I got out of surgery and I was high as fuck from all the medicine that they had given me. And I was like writing things on a piece of paper to Michael. And the only thing I could get down for like five days was carrot juice. Carrot and orange to be specific with a little lemon. Um, I was that bossy after surgery, but anyways, I was super screwed up from all the pain meds and my face looked like sloth from the Goonies. In fact, I feel like we need to put up a picture of sloth right now um, and compare it to what I looked like. Because it was not pretty. I was so swollen. My family was shocked. Everyone was like, what did you do? Um, which is a typical reaction, I think, for a lot of jaw surgery patients. Um, you know, they get like this like really strong response from their family because you're so swollen. So I went and recovered at my godparents' house for about a month and a half and all my food had to be blended up. So one day I got so hungry that I actually made Michael go to In-N-Out and get me a protein style burger with uh, cheese meat and raw onion and made him blend it up. And it was disgusting. I'm not proud of it. It was definitely not my best moment, but it was so good, so I don't care. Um, anyway, so I was going through this all while I had a blog, obviously, The Skinny Confidential, and that was really hard because I couldn't use my face for two months, or so I thought two months. It was actually a lot longer than that, but we'll get to that. I think I'm a much stronger person after going through that. I can endure a lot, like when Michael has a cold like he does right now and I have to hear about 800 million times how he has a cold, like, sorry, I don't care that you have a cold, like, suck it up. So after two months, I was still really swollen and I had a lot of plans because I thought I wouldn't be that swollen. Um, and I guess my body just really, really reacted to the surgery and I just got really, really, really swollen. While this was happening, I started to learn all these beauty techniques for swelling, which is why I'm constantly talking about the ice roller and the jade roller and facial massage. 
I learned how to really get inflammation down and so it was a big learning process for me while, while all this was happening. Okay, so after two months, I noticed that I got a little bit of an infection on my right side and it was really bad. This whole right side swelled up. It was no one's fault. It was just bone spurs in my body that were trying to push out, like little chips of bone. So I'm trying to handle my social media while having this infection with this swollen ass face and it was hard. Not to mention, and a lot of jaw surgery patients will tell you this too, I was dealing with an identity crisis. So when you get your jaw moved 12 milliliters, it's, is it milliliters? Milliliters. Meters. Fuck. So when you're used to looking at yourself in the mirror for so many years and you look one way and then you look in the mirror and you look slightly different, you definitely have an identity crisis. And I was dealing with it so bad. You're coming off pain pills, you're swollen. Um, your job is to take pictures and you're also dealing with an identity crisis and there was no one that i could talk to that could relate to this because it was very weird it was like a weird thing so anyways back to the infection so i had to go back to the doctor and go back in the hospital and get another surgery to get rid of the infection i was on antibiotics i think for like three months and back in the hospital for probably three days once I got out of the hospital, I was good, but I was still swollen. So in total, I was probably super swollen for about a year. I had planned on going to Fashion Week in New York and Paris. It was my first time. I was really excited. I could not go. I was so, so swollen and I looked like there was something, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I looked like I had just had a really hard trauma to the face for like a year. So I did end up going to Fashion Week and it was a flop. I didn't want to go out, I didn't want to go anywhere, I didn't want to see anyone. I, I felt hideous, I just felt gross. Now I feel like there's a lesson in everything that happens in life and the lesson there for me was that it was, it was humbling. It was humbling to not use my looks for anything and to really get creative with blogging and my content and I just really think that it pushed me to my full potential like it pushed me to you know talk about issues that I might not have talked about had I been able to use my face so I definitely think it was like a good experience but as far as the identity crisis that probably lasted for two years until I got completely comfortable with you know everything falling into place because like i said the swelling was really gnarly for a year but it got better after a year but it was still swollen so i was still kind of dealing with that also you should know if you're looking into jaw surgery that it makes you super numb so the movement in my like lips and chin was very minimal for two and a half years it was like really weird to move and what I think's really helped bring the nerves back is acupuncture and facial massage and moving my face and really just like waking up those nerves. Um, I highly recommend acupuncture if you're numb anywhere. Um, it's just it's just felt like I always want to constantly like massage out my face, which again there's a lesson in that. I've learned all these amazing beauty routines from going through this traumatic experience. If you are considering jaw surgery, if this is something that your doctor has said you need and your insurance has approved it, my advice would be to just really do your research and know what you're in for. I did not know that I would be swollen for so long and I didn't know um, all the lessons that I would learn. I just went into it a little bit blind and I should have done more research on it. If you're in San Diego, I highly recommend my doctor though. He was amazing throughout the whole process and he just streamlined it in a really great way. And today, three years later, I feel fantastic and I feel like my jaw is where it should be. I know that sounds weird. I felt out of alignment my entire life. Um, it felt like my jaw wasn't where it was supposed to be. I know that sounds crazy, but I have a lot of mind-body connection and I could just feel that it was, it was like kind of out of whack. So um, I highly recommend Dr. McGann and just really know what you're getting yourself into when you get this surgery because it is no fucking joke and the recovery is gnarly. And the identity crisis, I'll just say this too. Kelsey, my makeup artist is here and she knows all about the identity crisis. How bad was it? It was really bad. It was bad. I was like, I did not want to be in front of the camera for two years. I felt so swollen and so 
so bloated and I didn't feel like myself. I certainly didn't look like myself, wouldn't you say? I think you you felt like you didn't look like yourself and it made you not act like yourself. It, ju it really changed a lot of things. Totally, I felt so insecure and um, not like myself and not like normally I'm super dominant and I'm loud and outgoing and I just felt very introverted for like two years. So um, an identity crisis is no joke. Like it's not a joke to look in the mirror and be like, what the fuck is happening? I would love to know if you guys have had a surgery, if you've had any surgery that's changed your life, tell me all about it below. And thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me while you hear my jaw surgery journey. And I will see you next week. Look at the flick of their wrist. 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 Mimi. Yeah. Why was there a fly in my spark? That's not you, buddy. Well, you can't find one spark in the whole house. No. I don't want to get my lipstick on the water bottle, so I'm drinking out of a straw. Is this extra?